good. Out of the time. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, we pray for your help as we share your word. We pray, God, you help us to not only be hearers of your word, but to be doers as well in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Do you sometimes feel like quitting what God has called you to do? Well, if this sometimes happens to you, take heart because you are not alone. Wanting to quit what God has called us to do happens to all of us sometimes. Timothy, the spiritual son of Paul and a young preacher of the gospel in Ephesus, apparently had similar feeling. In addition to his personal challenges and difficulties in the ministry, he became extreme, timid, and fearful of what would happen to him in his ministry. Consequently, he was about to throw in the towel to quit what God had called him to do. Earlier on in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 to 14, Paul had reminded Timothy to remember, to remember his sincere faith, to remember his salvation and calling, to remember the Holy Spirit in his life, and to remember his loyalty to the Word of God, so that he would remain faithful to the ministry God had called him to. In our epistle lesson today, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 to 13, Paul instructs Timothy and us to remain steadfast in what God has called us to do, not to quit. There are three instructions which are also imperatives that Paul gives us to remain steadfast and not to quit what God has called us to do. First, Paul instructs us to empower ourselves by the grace that is in Christ. He says to Timothy in verse 1, Be strong or be strengthened in the grace that is in Jesus Christ. Timothy was to empower himself or be empowered by becoming strong in the grace that is in Christ. And this is not the first time Paul is instructing us to be strong or to be empowered. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10, Paul also gave this instruction, an imperative to the Ephesians. He says to them, Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Paul's instructions here was for the Ephesians to be empowered in the Lord for spiritual warfare. In the case of Timothy, in this context, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 13, Paul's instruction is for him to be strong or empowered in the grace that is in Christ. What is grace? And what is the grace that is in Christ? The simplest theological meaning of grace is the divine help, the unmerited gift that comes from God. It is also God's unmerited favor toward us that is in Christ Jesus. Paul knew what it meant to be empowered in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. From his experience of the grace that is in Jesus Christ, he wrote these words. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it, referring to the tongue that he had in his flesh, to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. He continued, that is why for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, 
in insults, in persecution, in hardship, in difficulties. And then he ends by saying, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Second Timothy chapter 12 verses 8 and 10. Paul was empowered by the grace, rather Timothy was empowered by the grace that is in Christ, as well as Paul. And Paul wanted Timothy to also be empowered by that same grace. He therefore instructed Timothy to empower himself by being strong in the grace that is in Christ so that he would remain steadfast in the ministry God had called him to, so that he could not quit, even though he felt like doing so many times. Likewise, God has, or God wants you, God wants me to empower ourselves or be empowered in the grace that is in Christ, so that we remain steadfast in whatever he has called us to do in his name. So whenever you feel like quitting what God has called you to do for him and with him, empower yourself or be empowered by the grace that is in Christ. Do not quit being a neighborhood missionary. Empower yourself or be empowered by the grace that is in Jesus Christ, many by many and day by day, through the means of grace, the word of God, and the Lord's Supper. Paul instructs Timothy to remain steadfast in his ministry, not to quit by empowering himself in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and he also instructs us to do likewise. Second, Paul instructs us to entrust the truth of God's word to others. He says to Timothy in verse 2, The things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses entrust to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. Firstly, what does Paul mean by entrust? The word entrust means to put something into someone's care or protection. It also means to assign the responsibility for doing something to someone. Secondly, what are the reliable men that Paul is referring to in this context? Paul is referring to men who are faithful, who will take the teachings of the apostles and pass them on to others. Someone said, with our faithfulness to the teaching and example of the apostles, the idea of apostolic succession is nothing more than laying of empty hands on empty heads. Perhaps this was one of the reasons Paul instructed Timothy to entrust others with the truth of God's word. We know for sure that Timothy may have heard many Bible studies and preaching from Paul and shared much time with Paul in personal discipleship. Now it was Timothy's turn to teach others the truth of God's word and probably disciple others as well. But what did this have to do with the steadfastness of Timothy in his ministry? It had everything to do with it. As Timothy passed on the truth of God's word to others through teaching and discipleship and they too passed it on to others, the gospel was being shared. The calling of Timothy was being fulfilled, and the name of Jesus was being honored. Consequently, Timothy was encouraged and motivated to remain steadfast in his ministry. It was then too late for him to quit, despite his feeling 
of wanting to quit his ministry. Similarly, as we pass on the truth of God's word to others who will also pass it on, we are going to be encouraged and motivated to remain steadfast in doing what God has called us to do. Because the gospel will be shared abroad and the name of Jesus will be honored. On the other hand, our feeling of wanting to quit as neighborhood missionaries will not come by easy. And we will be highly motivated and motivated in joining Jesus on his mission in our neighborhoods, in our places of work, and in our schools. As neighborhood missionaries, the fastest way we can share the gospel is by entrusting the truth of God's word to others. And as we teach others and disciple them in the truth of God's word, we too are going to be encouraged and motivated to remain steadfast. Paul instructed Timothy to entrust the truth of God's word to others so that he could remain steadfast in his ministry. And he is also instructing us to do likewise. Third, Paul instructed, or Paul instructs us to endure suffering for the gospel. Other translation reads, endure hardship. Paul says to Timothy in verse 3, endure hardship with us for the gospel. In verses 9 and 10, Paul discussed his personal endurance of suffering for the gospel. He tells Timothy, I am in chain like a criminal because of the gospel. However, he says God's word is not chain, meaning he continued while in praising, he continued to share the gospel with others. He also told Timothy about the motivation for his endurance of suffering for the gospel. He said to Timothy, I am enduring suffering for the sake of the elect, God's people, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ with eternal glory. Paul concludes his discussion about his endurance of suffering for the gospel with an old Christian hymn, probably familiar to Timothy. But notice back in verses 3 to 6, Paul uses three analogies to reinforce his instruction to Timothy about enduring suffering for the gospel. First, he mentions a good soldier. Paul says, no one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. Second, he uses an athlete. Paul says, an athlete does not receive the victor's crown unless he competes according to the rules. And thirdly, he mentions a farmer. Paul says, the hard-working farmer should be the first to receive share of the crops. Three analogies, a good soldier, an athlete, and a farmer Paul uses to reinforce his instruction on enduring suffering for the gospel. But what is the point of Paul's analogies relative to enduring suffering for the gospel. Here is the point. Timothy wants to apply all of the attributes of a soldier, of an athlete, and a farmer to his life as he endured suffering for the gospel. Similarly, we too are to apply the attributes of a soldier, of an athlete, of a farmer to our lives as we endure suffering for the gospel. Like a soldier, we are not to be distracted, but focus on bringing honor and glory to our commander-in-chief, Jesus Christ. We are to willingly separate ourselves from, for the use of God. 
and to seek to please him daily. We are not to quit joining Jesus on his mission in our neighborhoods simply because of some hardship. Like an athlete, we are to be disciplined and prepare ourselves to represent Jesus well in this world. We are to be motivated to keep the rules of the scriptures with the awareness that a heavenly reward awaits each one of us. Like a farmer, we are to be hardworking, patient, and hopeful as we endure suffering for the gospel. Do not quit what God has called you, has called me to do for him and with him. Empower yourself in a grace that is in Christ. Entrust to others the truth of God's word and endure suffering for the gospel. Then you and I will remain steadfast in whatever we are called to do for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Do not quit. Amen.